I wanted to increase the capacity of my power system, so recently I installed new solar panels using one of the easiest ways to do that quickly and without a complicated system. I live at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village where I get all my power from renewable sources. Years ago, our community connected to the local power grid after being off-grid for more than a decade. We built our own microgrid, which connects buildings together and connects to our local power grid. My house is connected to this microgrid. The microgrid itself does have its own solar panel arrays, but many houses have their own power systems that back feed into the grid, mine among them. In recent years, I've been adding appliances in my house that consume more power, such as an electric induction burner for cooking, so that I can move away from propane, which is fossil fuel. This has meant I'm consuming more power than my previous four panels can supply. So to compensate, I'm installing a few new solar panels on my system. Since I first installed my power system, technology has improved considerably and the price of solar panels has dropped by about 80%. It's become so much easier to connect solar panels to your house and get them back feeding and providing power. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Just after I installed my new panels, we got a huge storm with golf ball sized hail that gave me quite a scare. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that at the very end. Uh, yes, of course. <sighs> so another project that I'm working on this season is to get a few solar panels connected out there. I'm setting up a few panels that I was able to get secondhand from somebody here and uh, just want to set them up temporarily. Eventually I want to have them mounted on my roof, but I don't know when that's going to happen because I'm waiting on uh, scaffolding to be available kami scaffolding so communal scaffolding currently it's just not it's being used all over the village in different ways so hopefully before the end of the season i'll be able to get up on my roof and mount these uh panels up there but until that happens i just want to not have these panels just sitting around not being used so i've set them up in my backyard here and just going to connect them with this micro inverter that i have i already had some uh panels connected to it but the capacity of those was only about 220 um, watts and so these the total of these three panels is 810 watts so I'm going to get a lot more into my system if I connect these things so I just bought some hardware um, stuff like these connectors fuses and then a long line to come in to this simple grid tie inverter. And the way it works is the panels connect directly to this thing. And then there's just a cord that comes out and you plug it directly into your circuit, into your system, and it back feeds. And it's much simpler than uh, having to do all the stuff with like a charge controller and all that. This doesn't need a charge controller. It just directly connects to the solar panels. Um, much like a micro inverter does and um so that's what i'm setting up today and it's fairly simple hopefully um but right now i'm just working on putting some shrink plastic sleeves onto this uh this wiring that will go into the micro inverter right there so that's kind of what i'm working on now I'm just going to heat this sleeve up to shrink it on here. Oops, Let's see if we can get that in the frame. It's kind of blackening it. I mean, ideally I would have a heat gun, but I don't. So I'm just using this for now. We start by snaking these through the holes that are already in here.
right, I'm gonna start by covering these up because I don't want anything going into the panels while I'm doing this connection. So now I'm going to plug this in. It does say there's an error there. Okay, so now that I took the uh, cover off of the panels, it looks like it's doing good. It's got the green light on, which means it's taking in power. Um, so it seems like seems like everything worked fine. Taking in power, it's got all green lights. There's no error sim sign, so that means it's it must be working. Now we can celebrate. We've got a little bit more power coming in. We had, what, 220? So now we've got 810 coming in. So that's a significant um, improvement. And if any of you always wonder why I wear grubby clothes in my uh, in my videos, it's because I'm always doing work like this and if I wear anything nice, I'm just gonna ruin it. <laughs> and so I got the, the camera center shirt and I got the old shorts and uh, that way I can do whatever I want, get them as grubby as I want to. And then I save my nice clothes for uh, going to town, town clothes, like most farmers. seen a storm like this here before. There's like golf ball sized hail. And this storm is just formed and it's sitting over us. It's not moving anywhere. It just formed and it's stationary. And it just keeps hailing. This is the kind of hail that would just ruin a car. Of course I just put these solar panels down. Hopefully they won't get smashed by the huge hail that's coming down. The storm just keeps getting worse and worse and it's just sitting over us. It's been like a half an hour. This is what it looks like. We're about right here, I think. Yeah, we're about right there. And it started out as this tiny little red spot here, and then it's just grown all the way here and connected up with another storm that was over here that was actually worse. Um, but this cell here is just growing and growing and growing and it's not moving at all. It's just sitting in this one spot. It's been over an hour and it's just been hanging over us and gotten worse. And then 
pretty much the same. I mean, it's not hailing golf balls anymore, but this rain has just continued, the lightning. It's insane. Well, that storm gave me quite a scare. I'm just glad the hail didn't get any bigger than it did. No, since installing the panels, I've been back feeding a lot more than I was before, and I'm hoping that will translate into a lower power bill that will pay back my investment in the new panels and equipment. We pay 67 cents per kilowatt hour for our power as compared to the nine cents our local utility charges. The rate is set this high mostly to discourage consumption, but also so that our microgrid can save for investment and increase capacity. But that's a significant rate for electricity, even if it is renewable. I'd guess that's at least twice as much as any of you out there pay. I'd love to know more about what you all have implemented in your lives as far as renewable energy. Leave a comment below and let me know what kind of power system you have and what you pay per kilowatt hour locally. Okay, so I'm in Florida now and I wanted to do another one of these comment sections at the end of the video. This comment was from a user that has a bunch of numbers and letters. In their name, uh, most people lived this way when I grew up in the 1960s, lol, now it's prepper. So this was a comment that was made on one of my homesteading videos, the recent ones. Not too many people live this way these days. I don't think in the 60s there was a huge portion of the U.S. population, but definitely around the world a lot more people lived a homesteading kind of existence. You'd have to go back 100, 150 years to find a significant number of the U.S. population that were farmers or subsistence farmers. But that's not the way it is today. And there's a lot of preppers. I don't know how many there are. I don't know if there's even statistics on that or homesteaders. You know, there are um, many different reasons why people homestead and a lot of them are preppers and they're usually like right-wing conspiracy theorists like who think there's some you know big collapse that's going to happen in the future there tends to be a sort of a paranoia or a fear-based reason for homesteading and living off the land a lot of them also tend to have an anti-government stance so they're uh, think that they're prepping for this collapse and that the government is going to come and get them and so they Backstock a lot of food and weaponry because they think you know the government's going to come and get them and they need to defend themselves But to be realistic, I think that a lot of this paranoia about the government is unfounded I'm not saying that our government doesn't do crazy things uh, covertly, but um, I think that the Paranoia is blown out of proportion by the rich and corporations who want to turn everybody against the government so that they want deregulation and they want smaller government so that they have the government off their backs and they can do whatever they want, pollute our air, pollute our water, um, screw us over in the workplace. All those things uh, are just the worst for us. Anyways, that's a separate issue. So I want to break in here and say that any government that's going to go after its own citizens is not going to be interested in going after right-wing preppers. Any government that does that is going to be a fascist right-wing government and would probably be more interested in recruiting these preppers to be parts of their militia that will come and go after people like me. So I really, like, I can't understand the paranoia about the government from these homesteaders because it just makes no sense. A lot of homesteaders are dependent on the wider economy. They're also dependent on a lot of technology and machinery to live the life that they live. And that's something that I talk about a little bit in a different video that I posted last year about something that homesteaders get wrong. So I'll post, I'll uh, link that right here. But I think they're still dependent on the wider economy and it would be difficult for them to survive long term if something truly collapsed the global economy, it would be such a mess and such chaos. I'm not sure anybody would really escape uh, the devastation, no matter how much food you've put by and how many you know weapons you have. But I like to think of myself as different in this homesteading uh, population because I'm more liberal or progressive, I guess. I, I think of liberals as being people who are not living a lifestyle, they're kind of living a mainstream lifestyle, but they have a lot of political, uh, left-leaning political views. And 
whereas I think progressives want actual change in the economy and in the society and in our systems of government and we're also trying to live it. So in the wider homesteading movement, there's a lot of paranoia, there's a lot of anti-government sentiment, and I'm not like that at all. So the reason I wanna be self-sufficient and homestead and uh, produce a lot of my own food is because I think it's a way to live lighter on the planet. Um, I know where my resources are coming from. I'm producing them myself, trying not to use fossil fuel. I'm producing a lot of great, healthy, food that's organic and sustainably produced, so I know where that came from as well. So that's about it for the comment. If you want to support my channel, you can start by giving a thumbs up to the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that, and share the video as well. You can also support my channel by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash hardcore sustainable. As a patron, you'll get uh, first dibs on my videos. I usually release them early on to, the, to my patrons, so you can get a, a sneak peek at every video that I put out and also check my Instagram at Instagram slash hardcore sustainable I'll have much more frequent updates on there usually and also if you have a small business you can contact me at soulpowerbookkeeping.com uh, for a free consultation I love helping out businesses and uh, helping them get their books in order one of the most important aspects of running a small business is knowing what your financial situation is like and if your books are a mess you're not gonna know and you're much more likely to make some major mistakes and put yourself out of business. Uh, I have decades of experience uh, doing bookkeeping for small businesses. I also have a much cheaper rate than a CPA, so it's a, it's a much more affordable option for you. And also, I take the work off your hands, so you don't have to worry about it. You can just focus on running your business. So I've still got a little bit of footage left from Dancing Rabbit, but as you can see now, I'm in Florida. This is another part of my self-sufficiency is Although I come here and I live in the city, um, I also bring a lot of my harvest from last season with me. These are all my onions that I grew. And I'm also fortunate enough to have this uh, house that I'm living at now with a big garden in the backyard. There's fruit trees around. I got papayas. We got these long beans growing here that are producing like crazy right now. And then also there's the, the local farmer's market. I can go there and I can get local produce as well. So it's kind of nice. Uh, if I was back in Missouri, uh, I just have my stored food to uh, to be eating. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.